My marriage-based green card got approved in only 87 days and in this video I'm going to talk about my interview with my husband and all of the questions that we were asked in this interview for the adjustment of status for permanent res residency for this green card. So I wrote down a couple of notes here which I'm going to be sharing with you in this video and, and sharing with you the whole process of what we had to bring to the interview, what questions we were asked in the interview, and how soon we got approved after that interview. So when we first went into the center for the interview, um, we were sent the address via a letter in the mail. So we knew the address, we put it into our GPS system in the car. We got there, we arrived in the car park. Um, actually the car park was like $20 parking, so we parked up the road. Then we went into the interview center and we were met with security and a line of people who had to go through security. Think about it when you're at an airport, that thing that you have to walk through that scans your body and also put your bags through um, the security conveyor belt as well. Um, and then we had to show our notice. So we had to bring with us our notice for the interview. Um, and then once we got through the other side of security, it literally just took a couple of minutes. Um, someone met us there, looked at our notice and told us where we had to go. So me and my husband were told to go to the second floor, which is where our interview would take place. So we went right up to an interview waiting room, which literally again, kind of looked like somewhere in the airport where you're waiting to go on your plane. Um, like that kind of waiting area. Um, now our appointment was for 1.40 p.m and um, we our interview was called literally for about 1 50 p.m and we had arrived 20 minutes prior to our appointment so um but it, we only really had to wait in the waiting room for about 10 minutes from the time after we went like through security um maybe 20 minutes until our appointment was called so it was not a big wait amount of time um so the lady who was going to interview us she came out she um called my name and then we went into the interview room with her. She sat on one side of the table and we sat on the other side of the table. Um, kind of like when you go into any any meeting or interview style and it was just like a one room. So we were the only people in that room. And straight away, she asked us actually to stand up and raise our right hand and um, make promises that everything that we were gonna tell was gonna be the whole truth. And we did that and then we sat down and she began to ask us for um, some of the paperwork that we had brought in with us. So the first thing um, that she asked for was our passports. Um, so we gave her our passports. Another thing then was our um, birth certificates. Um, so we both had our original um, copies with us. We gave them and they were taken photocopies of. The next thing she wanted to see then was my medical packets. Um, so I gave that to her. And when I got my medical, um, I actually asked for a copy of the medical myself as well so I could see it because um, I know the medical comes in that sealed envelope that you're not allowed to open. So I had my own copy then I brought with me as well. Um, and then I'm gonna look at my notes for the rest of the things that we brought with us. So um, next thing we were asked for then was our notice so all of our like basically notices i had with me um however she didn't need photocopies of them just to look at a couple of those um she wanted my recent i-94 so my recent history of travel um when i entered the country and all of that um and then the next thing was my visa so she the interviewer wanted to see the visa that I entered the country with, which was my ESTA visa to prove that I did enter um, the country legally, I guess. Um, now, with that ESTA visa, I did actually overstay the 90 days permitted on that ESTA visa because that's when me and my husband actually got married after that. Um, so my, it just showed that my intention was to be a tourist on the tourist visa. I was, you know, here to visit my husband and to go to a friend's wedding together. My intention was not to actually get married on that trip. Um, I also gave my recent visas that I've been on. So apart from this time I've been here, I'd previously been in the States on a H2B visa for three years where I worked and lived 
on a temporary um, like non-skilled work visa mostly in hospitality and country clubs and I actually have lots of videos on this channel about that H2B visa and how to get on that as well if you are interested in that but I was I basically gave um, that visa and also um, I had the also gave her the um, job approved like the approved notice for the jobs in the H2B visa just to prove that I did I done everything legit I done everything legally all of my work here was legal and that I left on time as well so when my visa ended I actually left as well um, and then she also wanted to then see a couple of things from my husband so his most recent W2 and um, which he gave now this is when things started to turn a little because um, the interviewer started to ask us for things that we did not have with us or could not provide so um, next thing she wanted to see then was um, my husband's recent taxes and um, he did not bring this with him because we did not think it was a requirement we thought well the w2 was on the list and was a requirement however we did not know the taxes were a requirement but we actually had the notice in front of us and the notice actually tells you basically what to bring into the interview with you as well um and on that interview it didn't say that we had to bring the taxes um so we didn't have that with us um so we just said well actually that's not required so we did we kind of pushed back a little on that and um then the next thing was um she wanted to see my actual original um h2b visa um, which was in my old passport which i did not have i just had a photo of it and i had said well i actually didn't keep my old passport because um i thought it was suggested that you were meant to discard of those old documents so i discarded of it i don't have it anymore um the next thing then was um our evidence so in our evidence um area um the interviewer wanted to see more evidence of our relationships from the time that we had submitted so when we had already submitted a bunch of evidence in our paperwork to USCIS including um, photos and shared insurance um, etc but she wanted to see more recent evidence um, from the time after we had submitted that application so I had photocopies of a lot of um, photos actually i'm going to pause this video for a moment and get my evidence box to show you and i will also get the application to read out to you what was required to bring so just a moment okay so let's first go through my evidence box that i just brought over here and then after we go through all of that in the rest of the interview i'm going to go through the notice that i actually had to bring in with me and everything that that actually suggests that you bring with you to the interview as well so here was my evidence box, which I brought with me. It was a little cute love heart box where I put all of my evidence in, as well as my evidence box. The only other two things really that I brought me with me was these two folders. So one was for me with all of my information, my documents. One um, I put together for my husband with his birth cert, his W-2, his passport and everything he's required. So we'll touch on that at the very end of the video too. So here is my evidence box and everything that I um brought with me so um i brought basically a bunch of photos so a bunch of photos from our wedding um from our trips together that we had taken in egypt um to let me see have some random ones to photo shoots that we had done together to that's egypt again um that was our engagement um do, do, do that was our my sister and my bridesmaids or friends at my wedding um and then also um i did um oh this is another one from the wedding and then i also brought some photos of family because um i saw that it's important to have photos of like you your partner and also like family and friends together as well um, because it's probably more easier to fake um, a marriage if it's just you and the person taking photos together rather than you're actually interacting with family and friends and going to events so this was actually recently when my family came to visit me here in philadelphia um this is us in the city i printed off this one from my phone as well which is when we all went out to dinner together um this is another one and i had some more 
like similar ones like that as well like it was my mom's birthday when she came over um and then I also had uh, this one I was like in a bathtub together but I only had our faces in it just to show like you know that we are actually a couple um I took a photo of our bed that morning before we went to the interview and that was my friend's dog who was on our bed this is it in color I done them in black and white because I wanted to save on printer ink and then I took some photos of our room so like a room where it has like photos of us around it our wardrobes um to show that we actually like share a wardrobe and share a space in our apartment as well um and then that's the photo section um I also brought then some text messages so text messages like throughout our relationship from like the start some in the middle some towards now to show that you know we do actually text each other all the time and like you know say I love you and plan on when we were going to meet up and all of that and it also kind of shows how we first met because that was a question that we were asked in the interview as well was like how we first met and how like our relationship developed um another question they may ask you is you know when you first knew that you loved each other and then I also um, printed off this so also some photos from my phone but it shows the place that you were and the time so just a little more evidence to that as well this is when we were in Ireland together and the first one was our engagement this was actually one of the, the first picture we ever took together in Florida because that's where we met and then I also printed off um, some flights so um, like my flights that I took from Philadelphia to Dublin to see Jared um, like a couple of times like all the flights that I took and then he had also taken some flights um, to me as well um, and then one thing I didn't say is our social security number that's actually one thing we both um, gave as well um, I just we both didn't have our social security number um, our social cards with us but we knew the number so we gave the number um, and then so the interviewer wanted to see more even more evidence then um, because we had photos we had all of that but we didn't have a lot of evidence of like shared bills together we did have evidence that we had the same insurance so I showed um, that paperwork that we we're on the same insurance um, we also showed that I was in the process of being added to this lease um, but she did ask more in-depth questions of why don't we share more bank accounts together why don't we have a wire why not why am i have not put it being put on the lease if i've been here this whole time and our reasons for that was because i've only recently got my um social security number so um a lot of these things like to be on a bank requires a social security number to be added to a lease requires a social security number for all of these things require a social security number even for our insurance we have to jump to a couple of hoops and show other proof um other than a social security number so a lot of these things you really need your social security so that's the reason why we didn't have a lot more evidence so we did have to push back a little against that so another thing that I had was like literally a piece of mail with my um address on it which she um accepted and took a photocopy of as well as well as um um I'm trying to think what was the other thing we couldn't we couldn't prove um oh our bank account so um we I was added to a savings account but we it, it hadn't processed yet so we didn't have a lot of that sort of proof with us but again we just explained that same reason with the social security number so had it have been um our interview would have been a couple of months later than after I got my social security number and my work authorization then we probably would have more evidence and I'm sure in a lot of cases that's usually how the interview goes but because ours was so quick we didn't have a lot of that evidence and then I also brought my vows so our vows from our wedding that I'd handwritten and then I brought Jared's vows and I brought what the affiliate affiliate said like his basically um I'm not gonna, I was gonna say recipe but his basically um words that he said at the wedding and then I also brought our marriage license um um so that that was basically all of the evidence then that I brought um you know that's just what I had now another thing that we had a bit of an issue with was in my medical and um, when the interviewer was looking through that she saw that for the COVID that I had only had one shot and I, it says it said no that I had not had um, my second shot 
or a booster but the thing is that I got the Johnson & Johnson so um, it was actually not required for me to get a second one and I just explained that and I also printed off like the um, QR code of um, that as well so if there was any issues um, but I did just have to push back about that um, and then that was all of that information um, let me check make sure there's nothing else I wanted to talk about in these yeah that, that was all of that um, and then I know I wanted to talk about the notice as well so here's the notice I'm going to read out then what was required to bring in with that um, so after the end of our interview then the interviewer did ask us if we had any questions and um, my husband's question was well you know what's the next step where do you think we stand in this process and she said well we may hear back in a week and she's probably about 80 percent sure and I said, oh, well, I'd like to be 100% sure. Like, I have some more paperwork here. Is there anything else that she'd like to see? But she said, well, actually, no, um, everything seems good. The only thing she wants to run by her supervisor is, you know, to show that, just to prove that I actually did not stay in the country illegally um, until this time where I got married. And also that I had um, ticked a box. Um, I had ticked the box then to say, like, yes, basically I had stayed, stayed illegally. Um, you know this time um i can't remember the exact name of that box but i had ticked that um and my lawyer suggested me to tick that however um when she asked me why did i tick that box the way she worded the question i actually didn't understand what she meant by the question so i said can you actually like explain that in a more simpler form and she explained the question in a more simpler form as um this question means that you said yes to committing a crime and I was confused by that and I said no I didn't commit a crime so she said well why did you take the yes to this box and I said oh it must have been a mistake but then I actually cleared up that later after the interview with a lawyer that actually just meant like yes I did overstay um one of my visas just like being honest about that it's because I got married and that is no issue because actually getting married overseas and like supersedes that overstay anyway um so that was that cleared up um so yeah um i will read out to you then the notice what it recommends to bring in so it says you must bring the following items with you um please use the checklist to prepare for your interview so this is what it says the interview notice and your government issue issue photo identification so notice passports what i bring if required a completed i-69 form report of medical examination and vaccine records and or vaccination supplement in a sealed envelope unless already submitted please see form i-693 instructions for guidance on whether you need to complete a medical examination and updated vaccine supplement or neither now this is what i brought in my medical packet um if required uh i-864 evidence of support with all required evidence unless already submitted please see form i-864 instructions for guidance on whether you need a form i-864 required evidence for each of your sponsors includes but not limited to the following and then this is what it says that they would need to bring so federal tax returns and w-2 or certificate irs printed in the most recent tax year letters from each current employer verifying current rate of pay and average weekly hourly and pay stubs for the past two months evidence of your sponsors and or co-sponsors united states citizenship of lawful permanent residency all documents establishing your lawful uh, permanent residency status blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. so that was basically what you know my husband was asked for but we actually didn't receive a notice that that was something we had to bring because we'd already submitted all of that information um and we had already sent in all of that information and there had been no issue we were not asked for like additional evidence so we didn't bring in all of that with us and it wasn't obviously an issue in the end um now some other things it said is um an immigration related document any immigration related documents ever issued to you informing including any form i-766 employment authorization 
EAD forms, I-512, authorization for advanced parole, and I-571, refuge doc um, travel documents. So I basically brought in all of this with me, anything I'd ever been mailed, anything I'd ever been sent in online by USCIS, I just put together and stapled together and brought that in with me. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, travel documents and form I-94, which is your arrival and departure, uh, records to the United States, my birth certificate, um, my I-485 based on a petition filed by, is, is based on a petition filed by a family member, your petitioner's birth certificate and your petitioner's evidence of United States or lawful permanent residency status. So um, we brought in that I-485, the initial one that we did submit, as well as both of our birth certificates and as proof that he actually, my husband is actually a citizen of the United States. If you have children, bring a birth certificate for each of them. That was not required if you don't have children. If you are eligible, um, if your eligibility is based on your marriage, in addition to your spouse's, spouse coming to the interview with you, bring a certificate, copy of your marriage documents issued by the appropriate city authority. So we did that. Your spouse's birth certificate, we have that. Your spouse's evidence of United States citizen, law, lawfully permanent residence. So we had that. We had, you know, his um, passport, his birth certificate, his driver's license. We had all of that above information. Um, now, one other issue that we actually did have, I didn't touch on yet, was um, his driver's license had his old address because we were recently in an apartment very close by to this. Um, and his ID still had that address on it, but we had already moved here for a couple of months. So then people did ask why was that address not updated. Um, but he just explained that he actually had the other one in his car, but you know, does he want to go ahead and get that? But that wasn't actually necessary in the end. So that's all the questions that we were asked. Um, in the end, the interviewer walked us out. She actually ended up saying congratulations. So, you know, that made us feel kind of good. And I was kind of confused because I thought maybe we were like a little annoying because we pushed back with a lot of things in the interview. Um, but that didn't seem to be the case. Um, she actually said that she likes us as a couple. She said congratulations. And off we went. Um, and then literally, you know, as I said earlier before then, the next day, the I-130 got approved. And then the I-485 got approved and everything was approved. And now I'm just waiting. In the mail to actually get the official um documentation for that um and that has been the process so you know, it's been a little bit of a long video um lots of explanation of paperwork but if you do have any questions or any videos you would like to see after this do feel free to leave comments in the section below and i also do have other videos of like the biometrics and my timeline and also the h2b visa on this channel if you're interested in looking into that too so don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one